So Professor Anton made a video recently about um, people and things, and I made a little comment at him about how I agree with him partly that people aren't things, but only insofar as things aren't things. Uh, and I brought up um, the name of a guy named Graham Harmon, who uh, I found out about through Matt, aka Thou or That, uh, and I've been reading him lately and thought I'd get a little uh, further into what I had discussed in that, in that in my comments in that thread. Um, so Graham Harmon is basically a sort of unorthodox Heideggerian. He 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 takes Heidegger's ideas in a direction that Heidegger himself did not want to go. Um, but uh, but he is also influenced by, influenced by um, Whitehead and Latour. But anyway, uh, so Harmon looks at Heidegger's uh, analysis of tools where he talked about the ready to hand and the present hand. So uh, th this Heidegger is, is looking at, you know, say a hammer, you know, you're, you're hammering away at some nails and, you know, the hammer just kind of does its work for you and, and you, don't, you don't even really notice it unless until it breaks and then becomes present for you. So, so while it's working, it's ready to hand. It's, uh, and and in, in its readiness to hand, it's invisible. You know, you don't notice it while it while it's doing its function. And it's only when it breaks and becomes a pure object for you that becomes present at hand. Um, so you know, it, it, I think it's helpful to um, expand on readiness to hand. Look at all the things that are ready to, ready to hand you know, this moment. So for me, I've got my computer monitor that is working. Um, yeah, you know, and, and I don't I don't know, you know what the, what the mechanics are that the the, the lids work for me, but it but it's what well, is on and it's allowing me to make this video. Uh, you know, there's my my uh, webcam that is recording this right now, and uh, you know it's. Uh, and it exists for me in a way that, that I'm able to, you know, not so much notice it as much, you know. Here's the chair that I'm sitting in that's supporting my weight um, and allowing me to sit here and not fall down. Uh, there's the beams and struts that are holding up this house and making sure the roof doesn't collapse on me. Um, but if, if we can go further than, uh, you know, man-made tools, there's plants that are producing the oxygen that I'm breathing. Uh, there's the sun, which even though it's nighttime, is still warming the earth and keeping it at a reasonable temperature uh, so they don't freeze to death. Uh, there's the atmosphere that not only captures some of the sun's, some of the sun's heat, but also deflects uh, certain forms of radiation uh, that make this plant habitable for me. You know, there's my own internal organs that are performing their own functions so I don't keel over and croak at any moment. So you see, it's not just man-made tools. It's you know, the, nat the natural world is also ready to hand for me. Um, so, and the point is, you know, these things all exist for me in a certain way. They all, they enable me to be here making this video, but they're only able to do so because they first are, they have to, before they can, uh, exist for me, they have to first exist. And, uh, and that's really, you know, the, uh, the crux of the matter. And the point is, you know, they can be. A different way for different entities, while still being in in their own sense. Um, as I was point, even if you get even you know the readiness hand that I've described of the of the objects that uh, that I mentioned, you know they exist. I, I I've only mentioned you know one profile of them, you know for and how they exist for me, and not you know how they exist for other creatures. I mean, the sun exists. You know, for the planet Mercury as a gravitational force, you know, there, um, yeah, so, you know, the, so the, the idea is that no description of any object completes a description of its readiness, of, it, of its readiness to hand. The readiness to hand is also, I mean, it, it's, it's always, in, you know, ex invisible to some, some extent. That's because it's full force that exerts upon existence, um, can never be exhaustively described or, or even exhaustively known because it can exist in so many different ways for different uh, beings. And uh, so what I want to point out here is that people are also ready to hand. Um, there's people working in power plants right now that are providing electricity that I'm using to 
uh, to make this video. Uh, there are people who provided me with the language that I'm speaking right now uh, that allowed me to express myself in this particular way. There's authors such as Graham Harmon, uh, you know, also others who, who have who have given me these ideas to talk about. Uh, you know, there's the construction workers who built this house you know, that allowed me to be here right now. Um, you know, and I, actually, I think uh, there's a great movie to describe it, to um, get at the readiness to hand of people, which is It's a Wonderful Life, where, you know, uh, George Bailey is about to commit suicide, and then there's this uh, angel that comes along and shows him what the world would be like without him. And so you see the, the sort of force that he exerts upon the world, the effect that he has upon others, which, you know, it's, it's been invisible to him, and that's the point, you know, we're so you know, our readiness to hand is invisible even to our uh, to ourselves. We ourselves are uh, our our readiness to hand is you know, a depth which we can't even get it by our own introspection. Um, you know, and and so you know people only become present to hand to this again. You know we, we also have our own uh, broken tool part. You know that's that's the point. Is the present to hand is, you know occurs when. Uh, so it becomes an object by virtue of you know, its breaking down in its function. And you know, we, we experience this when, say, a person is late and we're waiting around for them. And then suddenly they're there and they're present at hand. They're, you know, they exist as an object. Like, I've been waiting for you, so, you know, all this time. Um, so, you know, so the point is, you know, people are both ready to hand and present at hand. Um, these are two poles that... Uh, don't just describe tools, they describe being itself. All entities in the universe are both uh, ready to hand and present hand. They're, the, the all being is tool being, as Graham Harmon says. But uh, if I can get a little bit further into uh, you know, closing the divide between people and objects, uh, I should at this point bring up Whitehead, uh, and specifically his notion of prehension. Um, so, I mean, the idea with, uh, with, with prehension is that um, our consciousness is just a special case of a broader phenomenon known as prehension. Um, every, every entity you know, exists for other entities in a particular way. So I mentioned you know, the chair that I'm sitting in, exi it exists for me in a certain way, and the floor exists for it in a similar way. Yeah, it is a support which holds it up. And ensures that it doesn't you know fall through, um, you know, it, and you know the same object can exist for different things in different ways. So a um, a window exists for a leaf that's blowing the wind in a different way than it does for a baseball hurling toward it. Toward it, you know, for one it's it's an absolute barrier. For another, it's you know, sort of a trivial, um, you know, uh, it's just a trivial obstacle. You know, and so the point is that uh, you know consciousness is just a more complex form of this. That uh, you know, for a conscious being like ourselves, there are just more ways that the, that uh, in our environment can exist for us, and because we're able to move in our environment, uh, we can experience more different ways of of objects being for us. So. Yeah, and that gets into the whole um, you know, embodied cognition idea that we are embodied in an environment where we'll move through it, it so we have perception in action and you know that that gives us um, you know a access to a wider varieties of the ways that the world can exist for us um, so you know what I'm what I'm saying is that uh, we can take Heidegger's uh, tool analysis take it from you know what he may have uh, originally intended it as which is sort of phenomenology of tools and uh, get it an actual ontology of objects uh, and get a, an actual external world that exists you know it, I mean it's available to the senses but it's only available to us because it first exists in itself its objects exert a force upon the world uh, which, you know, which doesn't just exist for us, but exi uh, but exists for us because it exists. So, 
Uh, I'll leave it there for now.